Look out boys, it looks like we got another anti-vaxxer on our hands. Like the previous vaccination video I made, this is a response to a channel who mainly posts videos of people talking about their great success after not vaccinating. So let's take a look, shall we? I chose not to vaccinate our daughter 17 years ago. Of course, what was I expecting? That you vaccinated her? <laughs> okay, let's continue. At the time, almost all the vaccines had the Marisol in them, which is a known a neurotoxin. It's a mercury derivative and preservative. Okay, I'm going to explain this from the basics. The Marisol is a preservative. It's a mercury-based preservative, in fact, but don't let that word mercury scare you. This is where the autism thing really came from. People thought that the Marisol actually caused autism. One of the driving forces of this fear was when autism rates began to increase more as more people got vaccinated. In fear of this, the Marisol was removed from vaccinations, most of them at least. And guess what happened? Autism rates continued to increase. Then a whole bunch of scientists decided to test if there was any linkage of the Marisol and autism. And we continued to reach no correlation or causation between the Marisol and autism. And you know how you guys are so scared of vaccines because the Marisol is mercury-based? Well, guess what? Mercury poisoning does not involve autism. Anyway, let's take a look at the Marisol, shall we? Now, here's the Marisol, and as you can see on the right side, there's a mercury atom. Now, by itself, it can cause a lot of damage, even under the dosage of a gram, such as damage to the brain, lungs, kidneys, etc. It is primarily toxic in its methylmercury form, that is a mercury attached to a CH3 group. One mechanism is mercury irreversibly inhibiting selenoenzymes. I won't get too much into this, but basically it plays a role in promoting the function of vitamin C and vitamin E. These two micronutrients are antioxidants, meaning they prevent mutations and DNA damage, which in this case is by quenching free radicals in the body. Now, since the brain uses almost exclusively aerobic respiration as an energy source, the lack of selenoenzymes means the increased quantity of free radicals, ultimately damaging the brain. Anyway, let's go back to thimerosal. Does this look like a free mercury atom to you? One of the cool things about mercury is its ability to switch between the 0, 1 plus, and 2 plus oxidative states, and each state gives it a different property. The 2 plus state allows the mercury to participate in organic compound formation, and that's exactly what it's doing here. On the left, the mercury is bound by sulfur connected to an entire aromatic benzene derivative, and on the right, we have an ethyl group. This most certainly does not look like the toxic state of mercury at all. Okay, I would love to talk more about this, but we got an entire video to watch. And I discovered I was allergic to it when I started blacking out and went to the eye doctor. He dropped it in my eye, I started to swoon, and he said, you can never have this preservative. Holy shit, you blacked out? That is one hell of an allergic reaction you got. That's horrible and all, but just because you get an allergic reaction from something doesn't mean other people do. That's one of the most obvious properties of allergic reactions. They are exclusive responses by your body and does not say anything about the bodies of others. Not to mention, do you know how rare allergic reactions to vaccines are? You are more likely to get struck by lightning than to get a severe allergic reaction from vaccines. When I got pregnant, I started researching vaccines and discovered the amount of thimerosal in the vaccines. And that was what got me going on my journey of researching the vaccines and everything that was in them. Yeah, I mean, okay, uh, but have you tried going to college? Or how about high school? I'm just saying the information you find on the internet can be very often wrong. Not only was there thimerosal in them, but there was formaldehyde. Ah, <sighs> formaldehyde. Yes, formaldehyde is toxic, but in vaccines, they don't have nearly as much formaldehyde to do any real damage. Formaldehyde mainly serves to weaken the bacteria or virus in which we are injecting you inside the vaccine, not to cause any real damage to your body. Just by sitting here watching this video, your body is producing formaldehyde right now. But the quantity is so low, it won't do any real damage to you. Similarly, the formaldehyde in vaccine is in such low quantities, it's not going to do any harm. There was aluminum. Hey, excuse me, miss, what did you say? Aluminum. It's pronounced aluminum, you piece of shit. <sighs> aluminum adjuvates are what's in the vaccines here. 
In short, formaldehyde may sometimes weaken the pathogen too much to engender a primary immune response. The adjuvants here serve to slightly irritate the local area, causing inflammation and ultimately an effective immune response. Too much aluminum may be bad for us and it can be toxic, but our body's pretty good at dealing with it. Again, just like formaldehyde, there isn't nearly enough aluminum to cause any real damage. Moving on. And, um... I just decided along with my husband that we didn't think that this was healthy to give, first of all, so many vaccines at once, and second, vaccines with all of these preservatives that we didn't think were safe. Except that they are safe. After I learned about all of these ingredients, I felt that it wasn't the healthiest choice to put all those toxins into our daughter's body. Um, I wanted to support her body and her immune system. Uh, without putting all that stuff in and make sure she had organic food and um, treat her with supplements. And um, she had a pediatrician who was very open to this philosophy and this way of life. Fucking shitty ass pediatrician. You know you can't treat your body with organic foods or supplements, right? Those would only be the basic vitamins and nutrients. How is that going to fight an infectious disease? Oh wait, I forgot. You don't know anything about biology. I also felt that unless I could see some independent studies done on the vaccine safety, that I just couldn't go that direction. What the fuck? Just do one Google search. There are plenty of websites, research, and papers that actually tell you that vaccines are safe. When my daughter was 10, she contracted whooping cough from her vaccinated friends. Ha ha ha, you done fucked up. Vaccinations prevent, but they aren't 100% effective, so I wouldn't be surprised if somebody who had the vaccination still got the whooping cough. You know, but the thing here is, if you had gotten your child vaccinated, she probably wouldn't have gotten it. So you not vaccinating your child has literally gotten her the whooping cough. That's pretty funny. She coughed for about six to eight weeks. She had been to two doctors, both who had not been able to help her. la di la la skip. Um, it, it wasn't easy, but it was definitely manageable. At no point was there any kind of life-threatening situation. It was more of an annoyance to her. <laughs> yeah, wait till you get something serious like tetanus. You were going to a whole bunch of doctors to treat your daughter. Vaccines only serve to prevent, not to treat. When you get a real disease and it'll cost you thousands and thousands of dollars to treat, you're going to wish you paid for that $20 vaccination. And one more thing about the whooping cough. I had her treated homeopathically. No, please, not homeopathically, anything but that. Wait, 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 hold the fuck up. Earlier you said that. We went back and this was the first time she had some medication. She had a steroid inhaler. You guys didn't see that earlier because I cut it out because it was part of a long story. You had a steroid inhaler to manage your whooping cough. That certainly doesn't sound like homeopathy to me. Piece of shit liar. And when I took her to the doctor, he actually had his staff come in and say, this is what whooping cough looks like in a healthy child. She does not have a secondary infection, and it's rare to see this. Not having a secondary infection is great and all, but you could have prevented the whooping cough if you just chose to vaccinate your child. I oppose mandatory vaccination because I don't believe that the government has the right to choose what is best for my child. Yeah, but the scientists that actually do the research can say what is best for your child. You know, you remind me of those faith healers. People making their own medical decisions instead of listening to professional opinion. That is my decision, and there is something to be said for mother's intuition and the information that I have about my family, about my family's history of the diseases that they've had, and about my sensitivities and the sensitivities my child might have. A mother's intuition? Are you serious right now? Okay, like I said in the last video, you are compromising our herd immunity. Stop it. Bad. Bad girl. Okay, for my final thoughts, please guys, please get vaccinated. Please vaccinate your children. This is years and years of research and I swear the benefits outweigh the costs. Don't listen to these anti-vaxxer fuckers. They don't know what they're talking about. Fucking plebs.